Hey, buddy, Crow back again. And as you can see in front of me, I have a disassembled Evercade. And um, I've already posted this video where I've disassembled the Evercade. And at the point I am at right now, I literally just disassembled it. And this is going to be the second video uh, where I'm going to attempt to mod this. I don't really know how successful I'm going to be because as far as I know, nobody's done this so far. So um, I'm planning on trying out two mods here. One I think is going to be successful. The other one I'm not so sure about. And uh, if you've heard about, you know, number one complaints with the Evercade, what do you think that is? The screen, obviously. The screen isn't that great. And um, you've got problems viewing it on different angles, especially in my case, if you're tilting it downward, the colors kind of fade away and invert pretty quickly. And what had happened was that I was talking to a friend, I was out camping, and a friend had mentioned to me that another friend of mine had um, done a screen upgrade on their Game Boy Color. And I thought that was kind of unusual because I had just been looking that very thing up. There's kits you can buy to upgrade uh, the, the screen on a Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, giving it an IPS screen, which is a much better screen. And I thought to myself, well, wait a minute, why can't I do that with the Evercade? And I started searching. Now, granted, I had actually looked up and bought stuff without actually really confirming if it would work or not before I even disassembled it, just so I'd have everything before I, I disassembled it. But I did find a screen. I'm going to put a link to this in the description below. I bought this on Amazon. This is an IPS screen. And when I compare it up to this, it, it should fit perfectly. So, and even the, um, the ribbons, it's 40 pins. Now, again, I'm not 100% sure if this will work. I'm just going based on the fact that this fits. <laughs> and, but I don't see any reason why it wouldn't. So what I'm going to do to make to see if this works or not is I'm going to partially reassemble this, attach this screen, and see if we get a picture. Let's see. I'm going to leave the plastic on here just in case. But let's see if this will fit in properly. Here, come on. There we go. Oh man, that's not in there right, come on. Somebody probably mentioned I shouldn't be messing around with electronics with a watch and especially a smartwatch, but eh, if I destroy it, I destroy it. That's, that's why I'm not really worried about messing around with this because I'm not afraid of destroying this thing. I have a backup in place. Right, this is not really, it's kind of hard to like, uh, this in here, not at the right angle, maybe we can turn it a little bit. Come on, come on, you should line up perfectly. Oof. Come on, I'm blocking the light, probably. Okay, come on. Okay, let's just assume that's right. Okay, that's that should be fine. So now everything's connected. Let's just turn this on, see if we get a picture. And we got power, oh, we got picture, perfect. Picture perfect. I should get the insert um, cartridge screen because I didn't insert a cartridge. Let's turn the volume up a bit. Look at that. Well, since we know it works, let's take this wrapper off. Oh yeah, that's much better. I'm looking at it from a diff different angle. Since I still have the worms cartridge from last time, let's try and plug that in. All right, let's plug that right in. Hot swap, well disassembled. There we go, that's our worms. And like we did last time, let's, uh, there we go, let's navigate. Let's boot up worms. <laughs> I'm like blocking it with it. There we go. Look at that. Let's uh, do what we did last time. Menu. Uh, do, 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 do. We want to. We want the settings. We want the full screen because anamorphic widescreen in this game. Return the game. Let us also load state. I should have not exited the menu because I want to load the state. 
Oh, that is nice. Oh, you know what? I wonder. So that works. All right, let's turn this off. And now here's the thing. Um, I was doing a little bit of research and from what I can tell, the only problem with replacing the, the, this pre-existing screen with an IPS screen is because an IPS screen actually uses more power, like maybe 15% more power than this. So our battery isn't gonna last as long. So, and here's the thing that I want to mod that I'm not 100% sure is gonna work or not. I got a, uh, another battery. The battery that comes with the Evercade is a 2000 milliamp per hour battery. And I was thinking, well, can I get a bit bigger battery that's the same size? And the problem was that I was trying to figure out how big this battery was just from pictures. And I found a battery on Amazon that I thought was just about the right size. And it is a 5,000 milliamp per hour battery. So I want to increase the battery life, even if I'm using a screen that is using more power. Problem is that this battery is a bit bigger, but I may get lucky and I still may be able to jam it into the Evercade. We will see. But even if it doesn't work, at least the screen works and I can still use this battery. But let's unplug our battery here and plug this. Oh, you know what? I just recalled. Look at this. I just remembered. It's a good thing I didn't plug this in. Here's the problem. And this is where I could very well kill the uh, the Evercade. If we look at the two leads here, if I were to plug this in the way it is, the polarization is different. So I've got to actually swap these around here. And I'm gonna do that right quick. I'm not gonna do this on camera, but I'm just gonna kinda of cut these, reverse them, and then plug it in and hope that it works. Reverse it. Reverse what? Reverse the polarity. All right, we are back and I've actually reversed <laughs> the polarity on this battery. Uh, did I make a mistake? Will I blow this thing up? We will find out. I'm just going with what my gut tells me here. And my gut, is not an electrician. So we've plugged it in. I don't know if this battery has a charge or not, but here is the moment of truth. We'll turn it on. And power, display. <laughs> Look at that. I think the worms cartridge is still in there. Well, it looks like we're successful. We're left with one problem. Will this battery fit in the Evercade when I assemble it? Uh, we can see we've got, oh, we got a little bit of power in there, according to this, but I don't know how accurate that's going to be. I'm not really sure how the battery reports to the device, how much power is left in it or whatnot. However, let's get this thing assembled and see if we can fit all the pieces together. Now, here is going to be our difficult part, the battery. <laughs> is the battery going to fit in here? Oof, because this is a bit bigger. So here is, okay, this will give us a better idea. Oh boy, <laughs> that's a tight fit. Can I make that work? Can it work like this? Let's see how the other battery fit in there. Yeah, that, that fit in there really snug. This does not. Unless I take a post out and just have no screw there. Actually, if I'm going to take any post out, I'm going to take that one out and just not have it screwed in there. <laughs> Oh, am I that desperate? Am I that interested in doing it that way? Out that screw there, without this post here, will it be able to go down in there far enough? Because I, I could live with five screws, to be honest, I think. 
Ooh, let's let's try it. Why not? Let's try it. I'll be back. I'm going to use a Dremel, kind of cut that out and see how well that works. All right, I'm back and it's like that post never even existed. Let's see if we uh, improved anything here. You know what? I think there's still this other post in here, too. And I don't I don't know what that what that was used for. It's probably just for propping up. I don't know what this post is for doing here. But um, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that post, too. I'll be back. All right, back, and that post is gone as well. So, battery. Okay, we could jam it in there, actually, now. <laughs> Boy, this is going to be fun to put together, isn't it? What I'm... <laughs> The battery over here, I don't know. I really don't know still if it's uh, too big, even with those posts cut out. Okay, can we get the rest of this in here? Oh boy. Oh boy, that's not good. <laughs> wonder if there's something I can do. Let me think about this for a second. All right, I may have come up with the solution. Um, <laughs> you may be shocked to see what I've done, but... Uh, here we go. Yeah, I cut a big giant hole in here so the battery can go through it. I originally intended to maybe see if I could shave away some of the plastic, but I uh, quickly realized that was not going to work. So, um, yeah, <laughs> we're going to try and kind of push it all the way, kind of, well, maybe not all the way through, and then I'll figure out something on the back Ooh, afterwards. Um, <laughs> we'll see. How uh, well, uh, yeah, let's try this again. <laughs> this is gonna, this is kind of taking a little bit further than I intended, but you know, I wasn't um, really too worried about if I destroyed this thing entirely because I do have an extra Evercade backup just in case. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, that is working. It's in there, right? Okay, the, let's just screw this together and then we'll deal with the battery afterwards. Yeah, I could have just as easily put this one back in, but I, I felt we came so far with getting that um, the bigger battery working. I want to I want to utilize it somehow. So now we've got this big giant gaping hole in the back and um, put this battery in. Well, it's already in, but... Um, Ah, there we go. Come on, sneak it down in there. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. Come on. Get in there. There we go. <laughs> Just like a professional. So, let's see here. We got this big giant hole in the back. Nice, <laughs> of course. Let's turn this on and uh, here we go. Nothing. All right, I'm just going to stop the video at this point, and the rest of this is just going to be some commentary uh, for a couple reasons. And the first is shortly after this point in the video, uh, my phone, which is what I, what I was using to record all this footage with, just completely died. The battery went down to zero. I didn't have it plugged in. It was the whole thing was taking a lot longer than I expected it to. And, and keep in mind, it was this video and the previous video. And even though up and up at this point of the video, it's like 14 minutes in, uh, I had already, <laughs> it's a dog shaking over. I had already been recording for like two or three hours, almost constantly. So it was like, no surprise. My, my phone just completely died. Um, but I got to a point at the end of the day where I thought I was done. And then the next day, things didn't seem right to me. And I disassembled it again and fixed it. But you know, Put your mind at ease. Yes, it is done. It's completed and it looks fantastic. But how did I get to this point? Well, just really quickly, what we're looking at here in this point of the video, every time and I edit this video way down too. it's like cuts and cuts and cuts. You didn't see me fumbling around with a lot of stuff that I fumbled around with. Um, but uh, I was having problems where every time I would close. Let's see if get. Yeah, every time I would close this the screen would turn off and what was happening was because there was a new screen in there 
Uh, and now that I'm thinking about it, there was another reason why. But every time I would close it, something would pinch onto the, the metal shielding and shore it out, which is why it would turn off. And every time I'd pull it apart, it would turn back on. Well, I fixed that by putting a whole bunch of electrical tape over everything inside of here. And, um, and then, you know, I finally got to the point where I reclosed it and I put this, you know, the front cover back on and everything. And I was like, hey, look, everything works. Everything's fine and dandy. And uh, we still had the problem with the gaping hole in the back with the battery popping out. Uh, but what I did was, and I'll kind of show you here briefly, <laughs> the switch mode here. I uh, actually just covered it in, I basically filled up the hole and the gaps with uh, hot glue. And then I covered it up with duct tape. And then I realized, wait a minute, I got a whole bunch of stickers. So then I stuck a whole bunch of, I stuck a whole bunch of stickers. Man, I'm getting interrupted like crazy here. I stuck a whole bunch of stickers on here. So I just want to describe what happens after this point. So yeah, I put a whole bunch of electro tape in there. I threw it together. It stayed on and I, um, I left it as is. And even though in the video I'm saying, oh yeah, this screen looks great. It didn't really strike me as great for an IPS screen. Yeah, I, I was looking at it and I'm like, you know, not only does the screen not look as good as I was hoping it would look, it doesn't look like it's sitting in there quite right. And it was kind of bothering me. So I, the, the next thing I did, the first thing I did in the next day is overnight, I let the whole thing charge. So the battery is fully charged and I let it run. And the first time I ran a battery test before I took the whole thing apart. And what I had running was Worms Armageddon the title screen, because it would constantly cut to the full mo motion video. And I was just running and the, you know, just from start to end to see when I got the battery warning and with the, uh, it, the way it originally was, it would run, it ran for about four and a half hours before it cut out. So I ran the same test with the new battery and the new screen. I got nine hours and 20 minutes out of that battery. So now the Evercade, and, and that's with the IPS screen now at maximum, and, and both setups were exactly the same, maximum screen brightness. Um, well, the volume I, I had on low and high, and I kept changing the volume. I don't know how much that would have affected it, though. But the fact that I went from four hours and 30 minutes to nine hours and 20 minutes uh, was just a massive increase in, 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 in battery life. And you would expect that from uh, more than doubling the battery capacity. So I tested it, I, I tested that, and I edited the other video, and I started editing this video. I was like, you know what, I gotta take this thing apart. There's gotta be some reason why the screen's not fitting in there properly. Uh, when I took it apart again, that's when I made a massive, massive, massive screw up. I tried to take it apart with a cartridge still in. I, I forgot to take out the worms cartridge that I was using to do the battery test. And as a result, I broke, uh, so I, I severely broke the actual cartridge part, port that you insert in. It didn't snap off completely, but you could sit, tell that it was plastic, uh, broken plastic and it, it snapped. And the funny thing is like, if you could slide a cartridge in there, it would still work. The problem is that if you were to put it back together, there's no way to put the cartridge back in. So at this point I'm thinking to myself, well, uh, what I wound up doing was I took the Evercade that I had as a backup and I opened it up and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm pretty sure I could take this apart without damaging anything. So I just decided to use it for parts and I disassembled that whole thing. And uh, cause I just was going to use that one part. But then when I went to do a little bit of a test, I realized, you know, I think the speakers are a lot louder in that Evercade than there were in, than they were in this one original one. So I actually repl replaced all the internals as well. And um, not only that, but uh, I did that because I would mentioned that the, the micro USB port, I think in the other video, I said the charger wouldn't work, but it's not the charger. It was the cable. Some of the cables don't work and fit in there properly. So I decided to swap that out and yeah, all the, the, the cables work properly with that now. Um, so I had taken that apart and as I'm taking it apart, I'm kind of comparing the pieces. And I still had the other screen and I'm comparing the screens. I'm like, I don't know why the screen isn't fitting in here quite properly because they're exactly the same size. But what I wasn't taking into account was that, and, and let's um, kind of get to the point to where I'm like looking at the screen here. Um, okay, we can see in this, this picture here, I've got the two screens and they look the same size. I even put one on top of the other like that. I was like, oh, they're the same size. 
I even looked at them uh, width-wise. I was like, they're the same size. But here's the thing. The screen, the new screen that I bought isn't just an, uh, an IPS screen. It's an IPS touch screen, which means it had an extra layer of glass on top of it. Uh, which And the, you can even see here, this portion here, which is connected to it, which is the digitizer. I believe it's the digitizer. I don't want... Uh, it might be wrong, <laughs> but uh, as far as I understand, it's the digitizer. It's what interprets your finger presses on the screen. That's the part, even though it's so thin, that's the part that was causing the screen to pop out more than it should have. And as a result, it, it when I was putting this back together, it was causing me to have all sorts of issues that I really wasn't understanding why I was having those issues. But now that, that I know that's the problem, that's probably why it was shorting out when I was putting it together. And also I kind of cut all, most of it out. The problem I was having put together was that the, the power switch wouldn't stay in place. And even when I did put it together, it just didn't feel quite right. So I actually grabbed that little tool and I pried off the, the, the glass panel on this and I even cracked it. So for a second, I thought maybe I broke something. I just cut the wires. I cut all this off. I pried it off and bam, the screen just slid in there. So good and so perfect, it better than it did before. And I assembled the whole three, the whole thing together. And you know what, without that piece of glass over here, without the digitizer on top of it, the screen looks so much better than it did uh, when I initially made the video. I mean, this, like I have it now, looks good. I mean, you can even tell, like, um, and I'll probably put a comparison though too. He's like, you do not get, I mean, even with on camera here, it's not doing it justice. This is maximum brightness too. Um, it looks really, 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 really good. It really does. And uh, so I've got a really good looking screen in here um, and a battery that'll make this power on for well over uh, nine hours. And I'll try to put up a side-by-side -side comparison. I think I have footage of both. Um, but yeah, even when I, before that, like I finished it the first time I'm looking at it, that the screen didn't look quite right. Uh, looked like that, like the bottom portion was just a little bit further away than the top portion. So I'm just really glad I decided to pull it apart again and take a, a deeper dive into it. And more to the point, I'm glad I actually disassembled the extra one that I had the extra Evercade that I had and used that for parts too, because I think the components in that one, I think that might've been a newer Evercade or something like that. The speakers were louder. I don't know why, but they were. Uh, so, and, and not only that, but now I've got a corrected um, micro USB port. And also, um, I don't know if I, see, here's the thing is, I don't even remember if I pointed this out or not, but again, the, uh, the stickers on the back, that's when I decided to put the stickers on the back. The only thing really left I had to do was to um, do a firmware upgrade on it because it still had like the original firmware on it. And it, even that caused me more problems than I expected because I was going through the firmware setup steps and you're supposed to hold the menu button, turn it on, and uh, the computer was not recognizing it and it was not recognizing it and it was not recognizing it. I was like, what's going on? So then I grabbed the, the uh, USB cable that was came with it and I plugged it in. And then it recognized it. Apparently not all USB cables work with this thing when you hook it up to a PC. So who knows? Uh, maybe it's because I was using a 3.0 cable and only a 2.0 works. I don't know. But uh, yeah, that's the point we're at. All right, really quickly, there was one thing I wanted to mention that I completely forgot. And that's if you remember when I was prying apart this thing, I kind of scraped up the screen. Well, I did fix that as well. What I did was I just used some white paint and I just painted on the opposite side of this uh, with just some basic white acrylic paint, let it dry, and I put it back together. And you can barely tell. Well, you couldn't barely tell the scratches before, but you really can't tell now. I think I said everything I wanted to say. This thing is fantastic. I like how I wrapped around. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't explain why I wrapped the stickers around, and that's just because I took this panel off so many times that it's that kind of started to like pop up a little bit. I could have easily put more two-way tape on there, but I was like, you know what? Let's use these stickers. I cut them so they'd fit around the buttons and I kind of just kind of like, oh, like a warranty sticker. <laughs> Did that there um, and there. So yeah, do not drop. I, I just like the, the stickers. I, I like the way this looks. I know a lot of people may not like the way it looks, but uh, 
I've uh, in the past done stuff like this. Case in point, this is my original Game Boy. You know, as soon as I cut the back out of this thing to make the battery fit, I knew all bets were off. I was not interested in making this thing look pretty as a picture. <laughs> I just, I, you know, but then now with all this stuff on it, it's got its own, um, it's got its own attitude, I think. <laughs> I just love the way that is. It feels great. It plays great. Even had it hooked up to the TV, that works. So, there we go. <laughs> I think I uh, will end the video there. That uh, that was a little bit more of an ordeal than I expected. Um, I think I thought that once the things were plugged in and they worked, uh, it would be smooth sailing from then on. But in reality, uh, you know, just you know, the battery cutting a hole in the back and everything that was um, the easiest one of the easiest things it was the screen that proved to be more difficult just because it wasn't exactly the size i thought it was and uh it was causing problems without me even realizing it but once i took that uh digitizer plate off fried that off oh it's it even the screen looked better because then it we didn't we're not looking through an additional piece of glass um so yeah there we go uh should you attempt to do this I wouldn't use this video as a guide, <laughs> certainly not, maybe as a reference, not a guide, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, the parts that I bought worked, they, both of them required um, modification, the screen, I had to pry off the digitizer, and with the battery, I had to flip the wires around in order for that to work, it's a good thing I noticed that, because if you don't, again, you could have destroyed this thing entirely, so um, yeah, let's leave it at that. Till next time.